Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I just got ran off the water by a huge storm, so I, uh, I'm gonna sit here for a little bit, let the rest of it kind of blow through. There's another one coming, and I thought I would take just a little bit here and kind of go over a video that I've wanted to do for a long time because it's important. This topic is gonna help new people getting into the sport and people that have been in the sport for a while but may not understand the proper boat ramp etiquette. So sometimes it can really seem like bass boaters and kayakers have a little bit of this unspoken animosity. And you know, whether that be sharing the same fishing hole or, or what have you, the number one thing that irritates boaters is when we kayakers have no respect or any type of idea on how, proper boat ramp etiquette. So let's talk about that really quick. Now, as we know, there are there are several different types of ramps. You've got ramps that aren't busy, ramps that are extremely busy, different times of the day where this is crucial. Um, you've got dirt ramp, got ramps with multiple lanes. Um, there are all different kinds of ramps. So let's kind of go through each scenario here so you can kind of understand um, what to do in case you've got a ramp that's particularly congested at a certain time. So rule number one, if there is a ramp that is has heavy traffic, boaters taken out, boaters coming in, I almost never back my truck down and put my kayak on the ramp, even if it's just for a second, even if it's just putting it off to the side. I never do that. Um, the boats can't do that. So the thing is, I always like to kind of give them that priority. Um, and if there is a situation, like I said, lots of congestion, boats going back and forth, unloading and loading, I will always park in the parking lot, throw my wheels in the kayak, wheel my kayak off to the side so that boats can continue to use the ramp and I will then leave my boat or leave my kayak off on the, the side of the ramp using my wheels. So my truck is never once taking up any ramp space for the boaters. If you've got a single lane ramp and there's nobody there, I will still practice good habit, park above the ramp, get out, and there are a ton of things you can do um, before you even are ready to get your boat down there. Um, I've seen it a ton of times where kayakers will back down, set their boat down, rig rods, get stuff into their boat that they could have done up ahead without taking up ramp space. Um, this is just a good habit to, to practice even if you're not, even if you don't have a ramp that's being used at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll park up alongside of the ramp I'll get my battery in, I'll get my rods in, I'll get my life jacket in, I'll put my net in, my drive, um, any of my accessories, I'll rig any rods I need to rig. Anything that I can do to make things a little bit easier and a little more efficient when I unload, um, this is the, t the time that I will take to do that. Really the only thing that I do not put in my boat while I'm up here is my H grate because of how heavy it is. Literally everything else can be done up above the ramp without taking up ramp space. So if you have a ramp that's not super congested, um, you've got one boat that's looking like they're ready to back down um, and no one else in line and it's got two lanes, uh, I will still go ahead, get all my stuff ready up top, back down the ramp but then what I'll do, I don't, you don't leave your boat in the middle of the ramp or even in that lane. I'll put my boat down, put my itch crate in the boat, and then make sure it's off to the side of the ramp. Now, I know this sounds like second nature, but you have no idea how many boat ramps I go to. And I see kayakers taking up the entire ramp when there's boaters waiting, when they're waiting to unload. And we don't get need to give them 
another reason to become irritated with us or our sport. It's not a good look. We're better stewards of the sport than that. So I think it's a really good idea to really practice and understand how to behave at the boat ramps. Um, like I said, always give them the priority. They've got a lot more to do than we do and they've got a lot bigger boat. So as little time as you can possibly take up at the ramp, that helps. Now, when it comes to loading up, like I said, if you're at a ramp that's super congested, I always set my boat off to the side of the ramp, go up to the truck, grab my wheels, turn the boat on its side, put the wheels in, and I'll just pull my boat up the ramp quickly, even leave it at the very top of the ramp. Then I'll drive my truck over if I need to and load up. Um, that's always kind of a, a very quick way to do that. And that way you're kind of not in the way of the, uh, of the boaters. If you're at one of those ramps and you don't have any traffic at all, or maybe one person and you've got plenty of room, like I said, I will go ahead and quickly back down the ramp. The only thing I will do, I will take my H crate because it's super heavy and a couple of loose items, throw them in my truck. Then I'll go put the nose on my T-bone, pick up my boat, throw it in the truck. I'll put one of my straps on, get in my truck, get off the ramp, pull over to the side, and then finish up everything I have to do. <music> I mean, you really shouldn't use that ramp longer than 30, 45 seconds and be in and out. That's just a really, really good way to stay on their good side um, and to uh, make sure that we're representing our sport the best way we know how. Looks like the sun is finally starting to pop out. That is my cue. I'm gonna go get my boat back on the water and go try to catch some of these fish. Thanks y'all and stay tuned for a couple tournament recaps coming up.